What's up YouTube? I bet you are wondering why you are looking at my bathroom sink. Well, I am happy to tell you. Today, I'm gonna go over the most random, tiny, little money-saving tactics that I have around the house that I do on a regular basis that over time saves me a ton of money. So let's get I to it. I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you're interested in purchasing the book, I'll leave a link down in the description box below. I have been living on $1,000 a month or less for my entire adult life in order to maintain my financial goals. It's not really that hard once you get used to it and you have your house paid off, but there are tons of things I do around the house in order to save money. And I'm gonna go ahead and start right here in the bathroom and show you it all in every room of the house. So let's First go. First and foremost, you may think that I have a dirt ring around my sink. Nope, sorry to tell you, but we have hard water here and the only thing that gets rid of that ring is sandpaper, which I clean about once a month. So one of the, thing, the things in my house is I only use bar soap. It's not that I'm against body wash, it's just a personal preference of mine. And I have this little thing that makes it so that you can put the soap on top and it lasts about, it probably doubles the life of the soap. Um, I will leave a link on Amazon, but you could also use one of those scratchy sponges, um, which I have in my other bathroom, which I'll show you later. But that is just one little thing that I do. Over here on the left, one thing I do is I water down my mouthwash. I don't water it down as much as I do the shampoo. It's maybe 10 or 20% that I water it down. But hey, that watering it down just 20% gives me a 20% discount on the product. Also on my toothpaste, I buy the cheapest toothpaste. It's like 98 cents bottom shelf at Walmart. It has gone up in price. It's probably a dollar 25 ish. I don't know. Or you can get them at the dollar 25 store, Dollar Tree. And I also have one of these things. I don't know what it is. I do know that a friend gave it to me when I was like 16 years old and I'm 40 now, 41 now. And so this thing's like 25 years old and it just makes it so that I don't waste any toothpaste at all. See that? Y'all see that? There's like nothing in there. So I don't waste any toothpaste at all. Moving on over to the bathtub-ish area. So I use exfoliating gloves. Exfoliating gloves get rid of all the dry skin cells and I also use only a uh, knockoff Dove or Caress when it's on sale or Brawners. Brawners is good for everything. It washes your hair, uh, can work as every, it's literally, it works for everything. It cleans everything, that's what's on the bottle. I also take my shampoo and conditioner and water it down. This, believe it or not, Tresemme, it's not Tresemme anymore, at least not most of it. So I take all of my shampoos from hotels, whatever, whatever friends give me, they'll just give me sh their shampoo that they don't like, because my hair is not picky and this is not for everybody. And since this is such a big bottle and the pump still works, I just keep refilling it with whatever shampoo my friends give me. But when I do buy shampoo, which I haven't bought shampoo in probably five years, because I just keep refilling this thing and adding water and more shampoo and hotel stuff and all that stuff. Uh, I will buy VO5 or Suave, whichever's cheapest. And then for conditioner, uh, you can look in the bathtub. I use Suave conditioner uh, or VO5 or whatever's cheapest. And I haven't used the bathtub in like months because it just wastes water and I use the shower. <laughs> so, so it's all dusty and dirty in there. I do apologize for that. So moving on over to the toilet, my favorite place, because we are in an extreme drought, I learned a lot from Cape Town, South Africa. I took some of their advice. First of all, I got a bidet to save money on toilet paper. I did this during the pandemic. It is much more hygienic. It is much cheaper um, to clean yourself with water and then maybe pat dry with a little bit of toilet paper, but it cut my toilet paper use down to probably a quarter of what I was using before. Um, and then up in here, so happy you asked, I replaced in both of my toilets, this is the toilet fill valve. Um, and the toilet fill valve, you can replace for about six or $7. You can get it on Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, doesn't matter. 
it took me about 10 minutes to install it's really not difficult and this this takes the water it, it'll this little gray part right here it allows you to adjust the water to more and less and you can use as little as a third of a gallon but you can see right here the old water mark and then the new water mark is about two inches lower so I don't know how much water I'm displacing with that toilet fill valve, but it's quite a lot. Flushing doesn't really save you money, but using less water saves the environment. So I'll, I'll spend the seven bucks to help Mother Earth. I think I'm this okay with that. one other thing that I do have. So I use an electric toothbrush. The batteries inside are double A and they are rechargeable via solar. So they're solar rechargeable batteries. And this, I once I went electric, I just never went back. You can take off the head of the toothpaste and just replace the head for about $1.50. So since I'm replacing the head, once, once this shows me that it needs to be replaced, once these are completely white and there's no green, it's almost time to replace, but not quite. But, makes my teeth feel so much cleaner and even my dentist says that you know he can tell a difference in the way that my teeth look when i go in to get my teeth cleaned so um, i would always recommend an electric toothbrush with you know so, uh, rechargeable batteries that you use via solar and maybe you can you know if you have to instead of getting your teeth cleaned every six months maybe you can go six and a half months or maybe seven months uh, just something to consider, but always get your teeth worked on. Make sure you have a beautiful smile. Okay. I buy at least 60% of my stuff at reduced prices. And I feel like I'm getting a pretty good deal. It's usually around half price. And, you know, given the huge increase in food, uh, half price ain't too bad. I mean, this is two pounds for $5 of ground beef. That's two fifty dollars a pound. This is $1.99 for premium organic coffee from Guatemala. I mean, Guatemalan and Hawaiian coffee are my favorites. Kona coffee. And then this is $5.24. And so that's half price. So it went from $9.99 a pound and it's 1.04 pounds. Is that a zero? Yeah. Down to $5.24. Don't be afraid of the reduced stuff. Just make sure that you freeze it right away or you cook it right away and you are all good. This coffee... <laughs> This will last forever. Uh, it, it does not have a date on it and it does not need to be, f oh, October. <laughs> I'll have that gone in two weeks. Don't even give me that October stuff. Come on, come on. Don't be afraid of the reduced Y'all are gonna stuff. laugh at this one. You think that this is Kroger drinking water, but it's not because when it rains here, it rains hard and I make it a point to collect at least 20 gallons of rainwater and then I put it through my Berkey filter and then I use that for all of my drinking. Now, everybody always says, you know, Berkey is a big purchase. Yes, I purchased it probably six, seven years ago. But here's the thing, the water where I live in Mojave County is probably among, it's like the worst in the state. It's like the worst in Arizona. It is totally hard water. It is packed full of minerals and the Berkey gets rid of bacteria, uh, you know, anything that can kill you, all the bad stuff, but it doesn't get rid of minerals. So the problem is that like if I'm, if I have dry beans and I have to soak them, the water here is so full of minerals that those beans do not expand and soak up the water. They just sit there in water and they don't get any bigger. So I have to, if I want to make beans, I have to buy water. But when I save my rainwater, I don't have to buy water. I do all my own repairs, remodels, and decorating. So if, if I can, I, I don't do some, some electrical and some plumbing I do, but I don't do like the heavy duty stuff. Like I can't replace a panel, but I can replace a ceiling fan. I can't replace um, an entire sewer system, but I can replace a toilet. I can replace a faucet. So little stuff. So this wall uh, used to have a giant square in it where there used to be a window and I, I took out the window and the contractor who put the sheetrock in um, left a giant square in my wall. So I was sick of looking at the giant square. So I g went out and I bought paneling and I put up the paneling and then because my house is a flat roof, it's on a slant. So 
uh, I could see I couldn't get it quite right so then I did trim so I did all the trim and the paneling myself I took that picture myself that red that red flower had it put on canvas and I took a lot of design ideas or I guess you could call them ideas from my realtor who um, I was selling my house in California and she taught me how to decorate so I took that all to heart and hi and uh, I learned how to decorate uh, a house that is a $67,000 house and make it look like a $267,000 house just with decorating and believe it or not these decorations are like super super cheap the side tables and lamps I got it like TJ Maxx I think it was a total of $80 for all of it the bed frame Amazon I'll try and leave a link in the description if I can find it it was 150 bucks um, the paneling was probably $100 uh, curtains were at Walmart the pair for $17 the blinds were $10 at I want to say Lowe's it could have been Home Depot but anyway um, here's what I was talking about the sponges so if you don't have that thing you can just put a coarse sponge underneath and that will make it work out fine I also remodeled this bathroom myself uh, put in a new vanity new flooring uh, I repaired the toilet that had a leak that was messed up and decorated it to make it look also like a super fancy bathroom. I get all my pets secondhand what can I say got him at the Animal Rescue Foundation in Walnut Creek and I got Nala who I found in my backyard hiding behind my air conditioner. Before I forget, um, I also currently am taking advantage of a free 30-day membership on Amazon Prime. I make sure to write down on my calendar what day it ends so that I can be sure to end the trial membership before they charge me. Um, and they do this twice a year. So once every six months, I'm able to get Amazon Prime for a month. So any purchases I wanna make, I will save up for that particular time. Um, and any TV shows and movies I have, I'll just write them down. And then when Amazon Prime offers it for free, I will watch it. Um, the one with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum, uh, that was really funny. I really liked it. So if you have Amazon Prime, check out that Lost City of, of D, I believe it is. That was a fun one. Um, so that's another crazy thing I do and I just didn't want to forget. Um, one of the other things that I did is I decided to go with a smaller refrigerator. Most Americans have a 25.6 cubic foot refrigerator and they are excellent at wasting 50% of their food. So why not go half size on the refrigerator and then you won't waste any food. So 50% less food waste equals using 100% of your food, 50% less refrigerator space. So mine's an 11.1 .1 cubic foot, saves me on a ton of electricity and the gas stove uh, came with the house so hey it's a roper uh, maybe it smokes a lot maybe it doesn't I don't know but uh, at least the burners work. if you are going to keep a food pantry keep a food pantry that you can use I do not recommend dehydrated food uh, as you can see I've got some freeze-dried pineapples and apples that I haven't touched in the August and farms the oatmeal and granola is the only thing I will buy maybe dehydrated potatoes but that's about it the rest is food that I eat and I like and I am doggone gonna eat it if the apocalypse happens and I'm gonna enjoy every single bite as opposed to buying pre-packaged whatever stuff it is that tastes like salt and is going to give me a heart attack from sodium overload so if you have a pantry get yourself a working pantry buy only things that all you're all faucets in this house are water saving faucets this faucet uses I believe 1.2 gallons per minute which is awesome it's a wand style so it's easy to clean my shower and I believe that if you contact your local water company they will give you a shower head for free that is water saving it's not gonna be fancy like this one with the little loop de do so you can move it around but they will give you like a, a shower head that is water saving and you know saving water I don't really care about saving water for money's sake because you know it here they charge by 1,000 gallons so whether I use 10 gallons in a month or a thousand in a month I get charged the same if I use a thousand and one gallons or two thousand gallons they charge me the same so 
it, to me, there's not really any sort of reason to conserve water other than the environment. We are in an exceptional drought on the west coast and the southwest and even up to Utah and Colorado. So I think saving water any way you can to help the environment and to hopefully postpone day zero from happening to, you know, literally like a third of the country, uh, just do it. You know, it's not going to mess up your lifestyle. You're still going to be all do right. Do you all love my giant collection of towels? Yes, I have three towels and three washcloths plus whatever's hanging. So I've got this one in a washcloth and then in the other bathroom, I've got one in a washcloth. So technically I have five towels, but I am just one person and I still sometimes feel like this is too much, but I know that, you know, when my family comes to visit, there's like five of them. So, or six of them. So I have to have at least Oh my gosh, I don't even have at least six towels. I don't have one for each family I'm a member. Oh my God, I have to go shopping. Speaking of conserving, this is where you all start to think I'm completely crazy. Awesome. So this is a washing machine to the right, which is connected up to my solar on the left. My solar powers my entire living room all the time. Uh, and I'll get into the solar that I have and the solar that I use at some other video, but that's not the point of this video. So talking about saving water this little portable washer and yes I have a normal washer and dryer but uh, to be honest with you I don't really use it much so this portable washer uses five gallons right so you put your five gallons of water in here then you toss your clothes in you turn it on and then it washes the clothes whoa that was such a surprise right but here's what I do is I will take the bucket and then you drain the water into the bucket right? And then I'll take that bucket and I'll go and wash my plants. Sometimes when I'm in a super water conserving mode, I will plug up the plug in the shower when I'm taking a shower and then I'll take my shower. Then I'll grab the bucket, fill it up with water and then I'll fill up the laundry and I'll wash my laundry in my dirty shower water because I'm disgusting and I smell bad and I'm horrible and gross. How's that for extreme? So <laughs> I take a shower I do my laundry and I water my plants all with the same five gallons. Holy geez, that's almost like a gray water system that like somebody could like, I don't know, make into like a multi-billion dollar industry to help save our planet. But hey, what do I know? The majority of my transportation takes place on this little bad boy. Yep. And I am almost to the point. I ordered a backpack for my puppy. And me and my puppy are going to go on some bike rides. I might put her up here, um, but I don't know if she'll freak out or not. So I'm going to start with the backpack and see how it goes. But I absolutely love my bike because I can, tr I can charge it. It's an electric bike and it goes up to 30 miles an hour. I can charge it via my solar. So I've got free solar and I've got free transportation as long as there's no coronal mass ejection or EMP. But hey, if the grid goes down and gas is not available, I can still get around fast enough to where nobody can run after me <laughs> and steal my bike. But uh, I love my bike. I seriously, you guys, it's like having a motorcycle, except, and I have a motorcycle license, except I can't ride a motorcycle because once I go over 35 miles per hour, uh, I start tearing. My eyes start tearing and then I can't see. And I've tried every helmet on, on the planet, trust me. I've tried full face, half face, uh, outer shell, inner shell. I've tried um, just a top helmet. with. Go I've tried with goggles, without gogg goggles, half shield, uh, everything. Uh, I still tear, um, even a fully enclosed mat. Anyway, so if I can't get on a motorcycle and go 35, and this thing goes 30, right under the mile per hour maximum limit that I can go before I start tearing, and it goes off road, hey, I've got a road bike and a dirt bike right there, except I get to go on sidewalks. <laughs> I had I mentioned about doing my own projects myself. So I redid my fireplace. Um, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. And the reason I redid it was because this thing is called a lintel bar, right? And this lintel bar was three 
brick pieces higher. The contractor I had come in to fix it the first time uh, put that lintel bar way too high up and every time I had a fire it would just smoke up the house and I got sick of it. But I remembered what he did and I just duplicated it except I dropped the bar down to where it's supposed to be. I haven't had a chance to test it because I did it in the middle of 125 degree summer heat, but we'll see. I also recently got rid of my TV stand um, because I'm going minimalist and I'm in the process of turning this house into a rental, a fully furnished rental. Um, and as you can see, there's little spots um, on the wall. I put in whatever that is, the wire thing. I put the wires in there. And uh, when I did that, um, I noticed that there were some imperfections on the wall. So I drywalled or sheetrocked or whatever. I repaired that. Now I'm just waiting for the white stuff to dry so I can paint over it and make it match along with the wire, ch the wire holder. I already have some paint on hand, which is great. But uh, I did that myself. So um, I didn't have to hire out for that. And I also kept my old TV, which is like super smaller than I thought it was. It's only 42 inches. Um, and eventually I'm going to upgrade to like a 70 inch someday. I'm going to have a whole home theater someday, but we have to budget for it. In the meantime, I'm going to stick with my, uh, heirloom furniture. That was my grandmother's, um, and my cheap Amazon furniture and, uh, chairs, which is, which is awesome. <laughs> one piece at a time we got to work on a budget here guys but that's something that I do um, I fix everything myself if I can if I'm able uh, paint flooring um, tiling now uh, redecorating you name it do it yourself if you can think about it this way it's already messed up the worst you can do is mess it up more and have to call somebody anyway but why not give it a try and do it yourself you might save some money you might have to hire somebody anyway but you were gonna have to do it anyway. So that's what I've got for you today, folks. Just weird stuff I do around the house. One other thing that I don't need to show a demonstration of, I don't vacuum the interior of my car, I leaf blow it. Uh, yes, that is correct. I leaf blow the interior of my car because the only thing inside my car is dust. And that's because I live in the desert, in the dust and sand. <laughs> and it's actually better on my vacuum and it's a lot faster to leaf blow your car than it is to vacuum it, believe it or not. All right, folks, that's what I got for you today. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.